What's up everyone, Ken here, back with another data science video for you today. Internships are kind of the rage this time of year, and I'd love to talk about how I got my first data science internship. There are a couple things that I think I did really well, and there's also a couple things that I think I could have really done better and, and improved my chances a lot. So let's get to it. As usual, if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. So for me, I thought it was really important to focus on my resume first. One thing I've learned now that I didn't know back then is that it's really important that you just have the necessary technical skills for a specific position. So if a position requires Python and some SQL knowledge, I would put that right up front at the top that your that your technical skills include Python SQL and anything related to that. You don't have to be expert level in any of those things. Most internships really require a pretty basic level, uh, but letting them know that you pass their baseline requirements for technical skills up front is a way for them to mark those boxes and move on to the rest of your resume. I think that you should also put a ton of your personal projects on your resume as well. That is a huge key, uh, especially when I'm looking through resumes uh, when I'm on the other side of the desk now. For personal projects, I recommend doing a couple different types of projects. So the first one I do is a regression project. I recommend doing a classification and a clustering project and then either a deep learning project or one where you use a gradient boosted random forest. It's also cool if you do some PCA or factor analysis that shows that you have a breadth of the different kind of core algorithms uh, that are relevant in data science today. When I was applying I did those four types of projects that I mentioned and I made sure I did them on topics that I was really interested in that a lot of the jobs that I was applying for um, were related to. So I did some analysis of uh, some train data that I found when I applied to uh, a local locomotive shop. I looked at a lot of sports data when I was applying to sports teams. I looked at food data because I applied also to a couple of food related technology groups. So. If you can have something that is in the industry that you're applying, a project that you've done, it lets you talk intelligently about that industry, and it also really looks good. It shows that you are genuinely interested in that field that you're applying. So this first internship that I applied to, I was in grad school. I had just started my master's in computer science. I had some data science skills, but not a whole lot, really. Um, and. I probably sent out between 15 and 20 uh, resumes and applied for that many jobs. And some people, you know, it's like, oh, that's really easy. I just send out 15 and I'm done. I custom wrote every co cover letter and I also made sure I catered my resumes to the specific positions that I was applying for. For me, I think you go, you get a lot more out of customizing those things for each role. If you put a lot of time in and you really focus on the value you can provide and understanding the industry of each role, you're more likely to get something that, that you really appreciate and you really enjoy. If you send out bulk resumes, I, I just don't think that that's even as efficient as really putting the time in uh, on a couple and doing it right. After I sent out all these resumes and cover letters, it turned out I got around five or six interviews. Um, they all start with a, a phone interview where you either talk with a recruiter or the manager of the team. In these phone interviews, I focused on really telling my story, my background, my educational background, my project background, and also what brings me to this company specifically. I really like to brush up on the news related to a company and I'll usually ask about something related to that to the interviewer. That shows that you're engaged, that shows that you know what's going on and you've been paying attention. I can't tell you how valuable it is for a, a applicant to actually do their homework about a company outside of the basic stuff. Really going one level deeper is very impressive. Again, especially when you're interning, make sure you have a very clear why you are applying to a place. You know, for example, let's say I was applying to Boeing, an, an aviation company. 
you know, I might, as a child, have loved to go to the airport with my dad, and I would watch the planes for hours and hours. And I always wondered how they'd worked, how we could make them safer, how the technology was advancing in that field. And, you know, working at that company would be incredible to me because I get to see the inner workings of that and I get to contribute to that. So, you know, that's an example of, in my opinion, what a good why would be. It's tying your personal story, your personal interest to the domain that you're applying to. Next, some of the interviews would have a, a light coding or a kind of data analysis portion. Those generally, the, for, for the coding stuff, it, it's not live. Um, I don't really like live coding interviews. I don't think that that's generally a good practice, but some people do them and I understand that. Um, I had to do a couple, I had to work with a couple different data sets, which was, was actually pretty fun. You know, you can explore. Uh, I think feature engineering is cool when you're working with those. That's something that might separate you from, from the pack, is thinking about, okay, not just running this through a bunch of different um, algorithms and parameter tuning and using a grid search, everyone does that. Um, let's think about how we can change what we're putting in to, to get a better outcome. So if you use some, again, principal component analysis, or if you do some clustering to change up what features are there, or if you do some sort of ensemble model that's creative, I think that that really separates you from the pack. Uh, these aren't necessarily used to say, hey, like, uh, this guy is, you know, incredible, he's doing this differently than everyone else. It's usually just assessing a baseline ability to do analysis. So I wouldn't go too crazy about these things. I'd make sure you do a good job. And if you want to impress them, you can do some of the stuff that I just talked about. But just make sure it is solid, it, it looks clean, your code is well commented, etc. Uh, because that'll get you to the next round. So uh, the next phase of the interview, which I ended up getting two, I think it was three in-person ones. I went in and I was able to basically talk about my project experience. It's, it's fun to be able to tell your story about why you chose a specific project and the outcomes that, that came out of it. And that's something I really want to focus on. You always want to talk about what the results of your work are. So it's cool to talk about the analysis. It's cool to get into the details of, uh, of the algorithm and like any of the, you know, the parameters you've, you've tuned, etc. But from a business perspective, you're always thinking about the value you can create. So one, one of the projects I worked on was a uh, algorithm to determine how fair UFC outcomes were. So when a fight went to a decision, how often could we predict correctly that uh, who would win the fight? And it turns out my, you know, my model wasn't very good. It wasn't very good at predicting that. But that can also be a, <clears throat> a symptom on the other side that maybe the referees are not good and they're not an objective judge of performance. So that's something you could take to that organization and say, hey, you know, maybe your referees aren't very good. Maybe they're not judging the matches accurately. Let's look into that further. So even if your analysis doesn't have that good an outcome, you can still have some interesting findings and really interesting questions associated with it. I think that, again, taking that uh, next level of thought and communicating how, you know, your analysis evolves over time is something that will really uh, impress interviewers. And I'd like to think that, that some of my stories there uh, were what got me uh, that position. Occasionally there's some technical questions mixed in, but for the most part they're, they're pretty basic. As long as you have an okay understanding of statistics, you should be able to get through them. A lot of the time they'll ask what like multicollinearity is, or they'll ask you what um, the vanishing gradient problem is. These are things that if you just look through some basic interview material, uh, some like the interview cheat sheets, you should be able to find pretty easily. Um, also, if you don't know, I think it's perfectly okay to be honest and say, you know, I don't know what that is, I can look into it, or I think it is something related to this. Uh, please, you know, please tell me if I'm wrong. Um, I'd love to, to learn more about this. Uh, that mindset that you're continually learning and you're looking for opportunities to learn is something that will really, you know, rack up some good brownie points for you. To get my first data science internship, it, it wasn't an easy road. You know, I, I sent out a lot of resumes that I custom tailored. I had to really think about my background, my experience, and how that related to a lot of different companies. Uh, I also had to really focus on telling my story. And I think that that's 
one thing that I'd really like everyone to take away from this video is that make everything a narrative. Explain the whys, you know, why you want to be a data scientist, why you want to work at a specific company, and why you would be a good fit for this role. I think whys are one of the main reasons that I got an internship in the first place and hopefully they can also help you get an internship either in this cycle or the next cycle. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.